See Renaud de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand, Act 3. We ended Act 2 where Cyrano will be writing letters to Roxanne for Christian because Christian doesn't feel like he's smart enough. And Cyrano really wants to express how he feels for Roxanne. So it's this perfect match. He has the good looks and Cyrano has the intellect. Welcome to Act 3 of Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand. Our setting is right outside of Roxanne's house. So at her house, we have a balcony and there's a little bench over here. Those are the things you mostly need to know. Here's the front door. All right, so we start off with the duenna and Ragano having a conversation. And they're sitting outside on this bench of Roxanne's house. Ragano says that his wife, Lise, has run off with the musketeer. Remember, Cyrano was upset about that? Well, they run off together, and Ragano was so heartbroken that he tried to kill himself. And Cyrano saved him. The duenna is listening, being nice, and she calls up to Roxanne because they're going to be late for their book club. So they're going to a discussion, and it's on The Tender Passion, which was a famous book at that time, and it was very intellectual. So they're basically going to book club to discuss a book, and the duenna is waiting for Roxanne. Well, Ragano is now a steward over Roxanne. Cyrano had to give him a purpose since his wife left and he was so sad, and so now he is looking after Roxanne. Well, along comes Cyrano, of course, and Cyrano has two musicians with him. And those two musicians, he won their services by winning a bet based on a fine point of grammar. Again, showing how intelligent he is. And he, <laughs> these music musicians are terrible. And Cyrano knows it because he's a great musician himself. And he has them for a while, but then he decides, you know what? I'm going to take these musicians and have them pester Montfleury. Remember, Montfleury is the actor that Cyrano kicked off stage because he was such a terrible actor and he happened to look at Roxanne in a way that Cyrano didn't like. So he goes and he sends those musicians to pester Montfleury and the musicians are out of, out of the scene. Then we have Roxanne comes down out the door and wants to talk to her cousin about Christian. So she tells him, Christian has been sending me letters, and they are breathtaking. I'm in love with Christian. His writing is so incredible. He might be more poetic than even you, Cyrano. And Cyrano's like, okay, his letters are pretty good, huh? They can't be that great. He maybe overwrites. He contradicts himself. Roxanne quotes directly from the, po the, the letters as though she's memorized them and loves them so much. And Cyrano's listening and feeling quite proud that Roxanne is so in love with Christian because of the letters that he has written. Okay, so that's our situation right now. He keeps up the game and he's pretending like he didn't write the letters. Well, suddenly the duenna cries out that De Guiche is on his way. And remember, De Guiche and Cyrano do not get along. So they said, Cyrano, run inside and hide because De, De Guiche is coming over. So De Guiche arrives and wants to say farewell to Roxanne. He says that he's been made colonel in an army regiment that is leaving that night for war with Spain. Well, he mentions also that uh, Cyrano's guards will be among his, uh, in his regiment. That means Cyrano and Christian would be going to war that very night. Uh, afraid for Christian's safety, Roxanne suggests, well, the best way for de Guiche to get revenge on Cyrano, because remember he hates him, to get revenge on Cyrano would be to have Cyrano stay back and not go to fight at all. And that would make Cyrano so mad because he loves the glory of fighting and winning. And he's such a great fighter. That would also protect Christian. So she starts giving suggestions because that would benefit her. Um, then after she starts flirting with him, De Guiche believes that he should stay close by 
and stay in a local monastery for a bit. And Roxanne implies that you should probably go to war, and I would like you so much more, then he agrees to march on steadfastly and go to war. He also decides to leave Cyrano's group, or his uh, Cyrano and his cadets, behind. And Roxanne then, so then he goes away, and Roxanne then tells the duenna, Please don't tell Cyrano that I just ruined his chances to go to war. I really want to protect Christian. Because Christian is going off to war, Roxanne expects that he will probably come and say goodbye to her. And she tells the duenna, please make him wait for me if, if he arrives. And while she's talking to the duenna, Cyrano tries to find out what she's going to want Christian to say. So that Cyrano could prepare something for Christian to memorize. And Roxanne says, no, don't tell him. I don't want him to know at all. I want him to improvise and just speak to me of love. And Cyrano's like, okay, okay, I won't tell, I won't tell him what you want him to talk about. And Roxanne appreciates that. Well, then Cyrano goes to talk to Christian who's been waiting nearby, and he says, here are some lines, you should probably memorize these because she wants you to improvise and I don't think you can. And let's go back to the house and let's, let's talk about this and memorize this. And Christian says, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I am going to speak to her from my heart and I am going to share. She, I know she loves me, so I know that it's going to work out. I'm going to share directly from my heart. And Cyrano says, okay, speak for yourself, sir. So Roxanne and the Duenna return from their book discussion, and Christian is there. So Christian and Roxanne sit outside her house to talk. And Roxanne asks, will you please tell me how much you love me? Rhapsodize. And Christian says, I love you. And she says, yes, and tell me more, rhapsodize. I adore you. Okay, you've said that. I love you very much. And she gets fed up. So it's kind of this funny scene where he doesn't know what to say. Cyrano's been speaking for him. And so she's disgusted, and she goes into the house. Boom. She's inside. And Christian's like, oh no, what do I do now? And Cyrano comes out, good job, well done. So he's sarcastically congratulating him for such a great job that he does. Poor Christian, poor Cyrano, poor Roxanne. Then they see a light in her window. And Christian and Cyrano both hide underneath and decide that Christian's going to stand out here and Cyrano will stand under the balcony and whisper what she, what he is supposed to say to Roxanne. Great plan, huh guys? So Christian throws some pebbles up at her window and she comes out reluctantly, not really wanting to hear what he has to say because she's so fed up with him. And Cyrano takes the lead and Christian has a hold of Roxanne's mind. So she listens and she's thinking it's amazing, but there's this awkwardness in the whispering and then him speaking. So Roxanne notices and she says, why are you speaking so weird tonight? And finally, Cyrano switches places, but Cyrano stands in a dark spot. So Roxanne can't really see his face but he is speaking from his heart to Roxanne. And he goes on saying the most beautiful things. And she's so touched by them. And Cyrano finally gets to truly speak from his heart. Well, Christian interrupts and says, I want to kiss. And first, Cyrano's like, no, 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 you can't kiss her. And he's like, no, no, I, I want to kiss. And then uh, Cyrano finally realizes this is inevitable. She doesn't, she's not loving me, even though deep down she is. She's not loving me, so Christian must get a kiss. And when Cyrano convinces her, Christian climbs up the balcony 
to get that kiss that Cyrano won. Cyrano doesn't want Roxanne to know that he's been hiding under the balcony this whole time. So he pretends like he's out of breath and he's run up and he's like, hey, what's going on? Roxanne, is Chris John there with you? And they say hi to each other. And along comes a cappuccino. A cappuccino is like a father or a priest, <clears throat> a religious man. And he comes by with a lantern and he says, I have a letter for Roxanne. And the letter is from Digish. So Digish has sent this letter to Roxanne saying, I'm hiding in a monastery and I need you to come and see me tonight before I go off to war. Well, Roxanne, being the smart woman that she is, starts reading this letter and says, well, father, this letter says, oh, well, the father doesn't know, the capuchin doesn't know how to read. And so she's able to read it and then tell him, this letter says that you are to marry the two of us on the spot tonight. And the capuchin's like, mm, I'm not really sure about that. But then she says, wait, there's a postscript. And it says that de Guiche will donate a large sum of money to the convent. And then the capuchin thinks, okay, if I do this thing, then I'll get money. And therefore he decides to marry them. So they go into the house to get married. And Cyrano is to stand guard in case de Guiche shows up. Well, of course, while they're in there, de Guiche shows up. And Cyrano hides his face with his hat and he jumps out and scares uh, de Guiche. And he pretends like he has just fallen from the moon. Remember, he's very creative. And he distracts de Guiche with his big speech about experiences in space. <laughs> and finally, he removes his hat and reveals, it's actually me, Cyrano. And then Roxanne and Christian come out of the house as a married couple. And de Guiche is so mad. He coldly congratulates them, and he's, but he's so mad about it that he says, actually, I'm gonna send all of the cadets from Cyrano's um, guard to war, and you're leaving tonight. So Roxanne is afraid for Christian, and she says to Cyrano, take care of him. And she says, for me, and she's pleading with him, promise me never to let him do anything dangerous. Cyrano, I'll do my best, I cannot promise. Roxanne, make him be careful? Yes, I'll try. Roxanne, be sure to keep him dry and warm. Cyrano, yes, yes, if possible. And then Roxanne says, see that he remains faithful. Cyrano, of course, if Roxanne says, and, I, and have him write to me every single day. And then Cyrano can truly promise this, and he says, that I promise you. So they're going off to war, and Cyrano will continue to write to Roxanne from the front lines. That ends Act 4.